If you're watching this video, there's a very high chance that you've seen the most popular video I've ever made. Due to events in my personal life, this is a video of deep personal significance for me, and it's a video that I wanted to get right. I am proud of how the video turned out, but the most significant thing about this video for me is its reach. I may not ever have a video get this many views again. And I don't take them for granted. The sheer number of over 200,000 people is incomprehensible to me. I can think of it in terms of the population of my hometown, which lands at the exact same number of the views in this video, but it doesn't really touch on the gravity of this number until I imagine driving down every single street in Little Rock to knock on every single door and show every single member of every single household my video. For that, I am sincerely grateful to everybody that watched the video, and I will never take the reach this video had for granted. I doubt I changed anybody's mind overnight with this video, but I have to imagine that I got at least one person thinking about the topic more seriously than they did beforehand. There's only been one video that I ever wanted to make as badly as this one. For similar reasons that I found this video so important, I wanted to take a step back and look deeper at where one gets these values that are so important. A huge inspiration for me in many areas of my life has historically been Kanye West. One of the most iconic parts of Kanye's public persona is his confidence in himself and what he stands for. It's not hard to understand where this comes from. At every step of Kanye's career, he was told no and went on to prove everybody wrong. I know everybody asked me the question. They wanted to know what kind. I knew he's going to wild out and he's going to do something crazy. Everybody wanted to know what I would do if I didn't win, I guess we'll never know. He was a regular kid that went on to produce for the industry's biggest artists and then became a rapper himself and went on to have what is undoubtedly one of the most impactful careers in the entire music industry. He was also the first rapper to have a major shoe deal, becoming the creative mastermind behind the most iconic shoe brand of this generation and becoming a billionaire in the process. For somebody who was constantly told no, but proved everyone wrong at every step, it's not hard to understand where this confidence in himself comes from. However, it seems that at a certain point, Kanye's confidence in himself turned him into more of a contrarian rather than somebody standing up for his beliefs. It's the same reason Kanye rushes to work with artists who have been outcast. I'm not denying that some people have been canceled for silly things before, but the fact that Kanye has rushed to work with people like Chris Brown, Marilyn Manson, and ASAP Bari always rubbed me the wrong way. In Kanye's mind, people said he was wrong about becoming a rapper, and now they're saying he's wrong about this. So what's the difference? When Donald Trump first came onto the American political scene, it baffled a lot of people. How could somebody so obnoxious, braggadocious, and obtuse be the front-runner for one of the country's two major political parties? Many people more experienced in politics can answer this better than I can, but I think that the country saw something in Trump that they didn't see in his opponent. Honesty. Whether you loved or hated what he was saying, at least he seemed like he was telling the truth. A breath of fresh air in the political climate at the time. Compared to career politician Hillary Clinton, it's not hard to see how he won. Of course, as time went on, Donald Trump's estimated lies have hit numbers in the tens of thousands, and he became the first president in the United States to be impeached twice. In this sense, Trump reminds me a lot of the current place in which we find Kanye West. Let's come back to this in a moment. The video I was talking about earlier was about the history of LGBTQ artists in the genre. More specifically, it was talking about the history of homophobia in the genre, and how this goes against the rebellion that has historically been the foundation of hip-hop. This anti-establishment attitude can be seen in all corners of rap, even in those terrible Instagram accounts that compare literally every album to Yeezus. What those people are really saying is how much they value creativity and experimentalism. Kanye is one of the founding fathers of this idea, as he reinvented the genre several times over the course of his career, most notably with 808s and Heartbreak. It seems like, for Kanye, this anti-status quo attitude has been with him for most of his life. It has manifested in highly positive ways, like this one. Me speaking for my entire culture, or me looking at my rappers out there, hip-hoppers discriminate against gay people. I wanted to, to just come on TV and just tell my rappers, just tell my friends, like, yo, stop it, fam. Mm -hmm. Like, like, seriously, that, that's, that's really discrimination. To me, that's exactly what they used to do to black people. 
and can be seen in pretty much every other famous Kanye clip throughout his entire life. And subtle, but in even many ways more profoundly devastating, is the lasting damage to the survivors' will to rebuild and remain in the area. The destruction of the spirit of the people of southern Louisiana and Mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. So for all the reasons I've already said, it's not hard to see how Kanye identified with Donald Trump. For perhaps the first time in his life, Kanye kept his mouth shut for the duration of Trump's campaign. In an extremely rare move, he actually hid his personal beliefs for the fear of the backlash that they may have caused him. Of course, after Trump won the election, this all went away and Kanye began a descent down a path that he is still yet to recover from. Around the same time, the Black Lives Matter movement gained significant traction in the United States. Kanye seems to have had no issue with the movement at the time, having been seen at protests over the years and making quite sizable donations to black Americans' families who were the victims of police brutality. These patterns of behavior make it even more baffling when we see where Kanye has been in the past couple of years. Well, that's right. You're not Hitler. You're not a Nazi. You don't deserve to be called that and demonized. Well, I... I see, I, I see good things about Hitler also. The Jew, I love everyone, and Jewish people are not going to tell me, you can love um, you know, us, and you can love what we're doing to you with the contracts, and you can love what we're, you know, what we're pushing with the pornography. But this guy that invented highways, invented the very microphone that I use as a musician. You can't say out loud that this person ever did anything good, and I'm done with that. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. And I know you're trying to be shocking with that. I'm not trying to be shocking. I like Hitler. I do not. I, the, the Holocaust is not what happened. Let's look at the facts of that. And Hitler has a lot of redeeming qualities. Well, I do believe that Kanye's poor mental health likely contributed to some extent of the things that he has said publicly over the past year or so. He still remains ultimately responsible for his words, the people he surrounds himself with, and the fact that he regularly deals with these issues as a result of his own refusal to take care of himself. A combination of mental health issues, the far-right people Kanye has chosen to surround himself with, and a decidedly different attitude that slowly morphed into contrarianism has turned Kanye into what we see today. Both Kanye West and Donald Trump are similar in this regard. The more they are criticized by the media, they seem to dig themselves into a deeper hole of their own behavior, doubling down and finding supporters who agree with them regardless of what they do. Kanye's initial support for President-elect Trump made him attractive to the alt-right who began to view him as one of the good ones, a free thinker. A combination of their influence in today's political climate created Kanye's last bastion. The only thing left to be contrarian about was literally Hitler himself. And that was Kanye's biggest mistake.